A red sun rises over Goose Bay, Newfoundland. The world's biggest aircraft is refueling on the tarmac, on its way from Berlin to Edmonton with a single piece of cargo, a 151-ton heat boiler. The only plane capable of lifting such a heavy object is the Antonov AN-225, Mriya. As six turbofan jet engines begin to spin, a deafening hum fills the air. Technicians make their last checks on the massive cargo and pilots prepare for takeoff. The air catches the wings and the giant takes to the skies. The AN-225 is unmatched and unrivaled. A heavyweight in the heavy lift sector. More than a quarter of a century has passed since the maiden flight of the AN-225. Since then, the legendary cargo aircraft has broken hundreds of world records and transported some of the largest loads known to man across the globe. Over a quarter of a century in operation, it has moved more than 21,000 tonnes worth of the widest varieties of cargoes imaginable, from machines and parts to even animals. Well, no larger planes have been created so far. That's it. I think it's rather expensive to create such a plane. And one needs sufficient experience with large planes, because it's not an easy task. It is part of the tester's work. But if you are scared, this means this is not your profession. Our planes have such characteristics and opportunities that they can be marketed throughout the world. The boundaries of Ukraine and even of the former Soviet Union are too narrow for them. Kiev, the great city on the Dnieper River, is the capital of Ukraine, which stretches from the frontiers of Poland and Hungary to Russia and the Black Sea. Until independence in 1991, Ukraine was part first of Russia, then of the Soviet Union. It was here that after World War II, the Soviet government decided to locate one of its prime strategic industries, cargo planes. The Russians were the first to experiment long distance flight using giant planes, such as this Tupolev Ant-20 a record-breaking aircraft powered by no less than seven engines. The Germans developed a powered glider for heavy transport duties during World War II, the Messerschmitt 323 Gigant, or Giant. The world was getting used to mega planes well before the Antonov Design Bureau was founded. The Antonov Design Bureau was built around one of Russia's foremost aircraft designers, Alyek Antonov. The state owned everything, however, so when Alyek Antonov pioneered record-breaking aircraft in the 1960s, he continued to be just an aircraft designer. His team grew and eventually was able to control production of the aircraft in its own factories. Maria started with Ruslan, the AN-124 plane. It was a plane designed by Ole Kostyanovich Antonov. AN-124, Rusland, and the idea that gave rise to our dream also belonged to Antonov. Everything changed as the world was changing. In Soviet times, we were dealing with aviation tasks, which were financed entirely by the state. The planning was centralized. The government gave us tasks telling us what to do. It provided funds, and this is how the planes were constructed. During the Cold War years, the Antonov Design Bureau came up with solutions to Russia's pressing need to transport troops and weapons long distances at high speed. 
While the USA was producing the Lockheed C-130 Hercules, Antonov designed and built the AN-22, a long-distance transport plane that was the largest of its kind on the market at the time. The world was already full of large aircraft. American millionaire and pilot Howard Hughes paid for the largest flying boat ever built, which still holds the record for the widest wingspan, the Spruce Goose. It flew only once. Boeing converted its war productions into building civilian planes and the largest airliner of the time, the Boeing 747. The 747 took to the air in 1970, while the US Air Force ordered a number of large planes to transport military equipment halfway around the world, such as the C-5 Galaxy. There seemed no limit to the size of the plane, as long as it had enough power and enough lift in the wings. Over the years, Antonov adopted the jet engine and built faster and larger planes for the Soviet military and tested new concepts, such as the AN-72, with its overwing engines that increase lift. However, when the US Air Force began deploying its long-distance C-5 Galaxy transports, Antonov and the Soviet Union realized that in case of war, they would have to move just as much military material as far and as fast. Design of the then largest transport aircraft in the world began, the AN-124 Ruslan, or, as NATO knew it, the Cossack. It flew for the first time in December 1982. The 1980s were marked by increased rivalry between the USA and Russia in space, too. NASA's Space Shuttle not only carried out experiments in space, but also contributed to the USA's Strategic Defense Initiative, a wall of anti-missile technologies that, it was claimed, took the teeth out of the Soviet threat. In an arms race that eventually broke the back of the Soviet economy, the Russian Space Shuttle, baptized the Buran, played a key role. Built in 1988, when Ukraine was still a part of the Soviet Union, the AN-225 aircraft still operates from the original site of the Antonov factory and headquarters, here outside Kiev. Only 25 years ago, the city was a major industrial center in the Soviet Union. Here, Soviet engineers of the Antonov Design Bureau put together the largest military cargo plane of the time, the AN-124 Ruslan and then were ordered to adapt it to carry the Soviet Union's own space shuttle, the Buran. After the end of World War II, the USA and the Soviet Union vied to break records in space. Although the Russians were the first to successfully send a satellite, then a cosmonaut, into space, the Americans put a man on the moon and advanced space technology through a strategic defense initiative dubbed Star Wars, which included massive funding for NASA's space shuttle program. Russia, meanwhile, used the space race to develop its first intercontinental ballistic missiles. The Russian space shuttle flew its first and only space flight on the 15th of November 1988. But just as the Americans used a jumbo jet to carry theirs, the Soviets too needed a big plane to carry Buran. They asked Antonov for a solution. The result was this. In the AN-225 plane called Maria Dream, we used Ruslan's wings and the body, in fact, the larger part of the center body from Ruslan and the chassis, but we added some changes. In order to save design time, the Antonov Bureau began using their then largest plane as a base. A twin tail to make space for the Buran, more engines for more power, larger wings for more lift, 
and a massive cargo hold to be able to carry the space shuttle's ancillary equipment. Objects as large as 11 meters in diameter and 76 meters long can fit inside. But with a payload of 250 metric tons, it could also carry things on its back, which is what it is designed for. The AN-124 Ruslan morphed into something quite different, but clearly related. The Mriya, or Dream. The changes were quite significant. They included an additional center part of the wing and the additional engines, because there were four there and six here. And the rear loading hatch was closed in Mriya. In other words, these were in fact the main parameters. Among the unique characteristics of Soviet-era aircraft are their robustness. Sturdy frames and tough undercarriage were a fundamental part of Soviet design strategy to enable aircraft to survive a potential nuclear war and deploy to irregular or semi-prepared airfields. Like all Antonov's planes, this one was designed to land not only on paved, but also on unpaved airfields. This explains the number of chassis. And respectively, the frame is large. This all has to be buffered during the impact stress during landing. It has to be distributed, and the number of chassis was designed respectively. However, not only had the aircraft to be able to survive tough landings, but the airfields had to survive the giant's weight plunging onto them too. The plane's payload is a whopping 250 metric tons. The Antonov 225 has an increased capacity landing gear system with 32 wheels, some of which are steerable. It was designed so the aircraft could turn on small runways. On each side, there are seven pairs of wheels, plus two front landing gears with two wheels each, explains Grigorenka Maxim, who is in charge of maintenance on the Mriya. There are seven rows of the main chassis. They are special because, despite of the big size of this plane, the last four rows are rotary racks. Despite its dimensions, the plane can turn round in a small place with minimum radius. When the plane is towed, these wheels can turn as well. Discover the past with exclusive history documentaries and ad-free podcasts presented by world-renowned historians, all from History Hit. Watch them on your smart TV or on the go with your mobile device. Download the app now to explore everything from the wonders of ancient Pompeii and the mystery of the princes in the tower to the life of Anne Boleyn and D-Day. Sign up via the link in the description. In the tiny cockpit, conventional instruments move the control surfaces hydraulically, and the throttles for the six massive turbofan engines are still manual. The cockpit opens onto a corridor where the crew and technicians can rest during a long mission. Dmitry Antonov has worked for 22 years at Antonov since retiring as a military pilot and instructor. He has flown nearly every Antonov-designed plane, including this one, the most massive of them all. This aircraft, Antonov-225, also Antonov-124, Antonov-7274, Antonov-148, 158, and another one aircraft. It is a unique experience to be at the cockpit controls of this one-of-a-kind plane. Mm. I'm driving the biggest aircraft in the world, it's just only this one. But for normal control, it's not, not easy, but uh, it's not so hard. It's, um, you have uh, all control and uh, uh, you have big team flying with you. Uh, we are working and have a good team spirit and uh, everybody uh, trying to help and working for captain. For, uh, to uh, uh, make a safe flight. His crew of pilots, engineers, mechanics and technicians 
must all know the AN225 in great detail. They must be autonomous so that wherever they land, they can troubleshoot any problems on their own. Nobody knows this aircraft. We have to, after landing, we have to make a loading, offloading, fueling, and maybe if we have some problem with equipment to uh, make uh, small maintenance or repair something. That's why all, all uh, totally, usually we are flying 18, 20 person on this aircraft. It, uh, we have two cabin here, just it's pilot cabin and have a uh, technician's cabin in the rear side. Um, and enough space to uh, feel like home here. He has come to know every corner of the cavernous aircraft, whose vast spaces are remarkable. It's totally, we have six beds. It's um, good, good uh, for uh, who make a uh, the decision to prepare for long flight uh, and um, uh, uh, to sleep here, to uh, take a dinner. All uh, also we have small kitchen here uh, to uh, prepare coffee, tea, or uh, heat catering. And here we have big space uh, for just it's simply space for um, we can walk here and also we are um, keeping here some spare parts for our um, navigation equipment for um, all other system you can see it's equipment navigation equipment fire protection system and also in, it's finished we can uh, proceed from here to top of aircraft Actually placing a load inside such a massive aircraft was a huge challenge. So designers had an internal crane built inside the cargo hold. It's uh, almost 44 meters long. It's uh, six meters wide and four, uh, more than four meters high. Uh, inside you can see um, everything what needs to load aircraft. It's uh, uh, loading equipment to crane uh, to take uh, any kind of cargo. We have um, uh, equipment to fix aircraft, uh, fix uh, this cargo inside compartment, and also some spare parts, uh, the spare wheel. Um, and uh, our, for example, here it's a tow bar because it's uh, need to sometimes to towing aircraft on ground. Here it's door uh, to... Through, through this door we can proceed to technicians, uh, technicians uh, uh, compartment. It's not connecting with pilot cabin, but uh, it's the same, um, uh, quite enough space uh, to stay our technicians during the flight. Remarkably, there is a lot of space that goes unused. The loadmasters are also catered for, with ample space for dining, sleeping and passing the hours in flight. It's a small kitchen here to prepare and uh, it's a place where the technician is sitting during takeoff and landing. And the back side you see 11 beds. It's good uh, for rest. A kneeling undercarriage and a folding nose loading ramp are the heavy lift hallmarks of the AN225. It literally loads and unloads oversized cargo through its nose and kneels using retractable nose gear, allowing deliveries to drive directly into the cargo bay. Several small suburban houses or 80 mid-sized cars can fit inside the cargo bay. There were other major ways the aircraft differed from its smaller brother and from every other aircraft around the world. It is the one and only such aircraft in the world, dwarfing the Boeing 747 and outlifting the C-5 Galaxy transporter. And with regard to the forebody, almost nothing was changed if we compare AN124 
to AN-225. And, of course, in view of the larger capacity with regard to the length of the center body and the wings, the plane's carrying capacity was increased to 250 tons maximum. That's all. <laughs> The wingspan of the aircraft was extended from 73 to 88 meters, and the wing profile was modified too, to give it extra lift at the junction with the fuselage and greater widths to house even more fuel, an incredible 300,000 kilos worth. The extra fuel was needed to power the six Ivchenka Progress D-18T engines, built in the Soviet Union, now Russia. Each of these engines provides 51,600 pounds of thrust, enough to push the aircraft up to a takeoff speed of over 850 kilometers per hour. The wing profile and thrust gives enough power to get the 280-ton aircraft and all its fuel and cargo, a stunning total of up to 640 tons, into the air to a cruising speed of 800 kilometers per hour. On the 1st of December 1988, the Antonov Design Bureau finally presented its plane. It had not flown yet, and many wondered if it ever would. The Mriya lifted off the snowbound runway and graced the skies over Kiev with a 74-minute maiden flight. That day, it set 106 world records for aviation. These were quite difficult times. These were the times before the collapse of the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, SEB, and the USSR collapse. Yet although our firm was working like we are working now, everything we were doing was done on the basis of great enthusiasm. Upon seeing the AN-225, the first pilot was reported as doubting whether the plane could actually manage to lift off the ground. Oleksandr Galunenko is a test pilot, one of the people tasked with trying out new planes. He flew the AN-225 with the Buran piggyback all the way to Paris. That's why, back in 1989, when the program wasn't closed, we flew from Muriria in May 1989 to Baikonur, where we put Buran on it, and we conducted a series of tests with Buran. And then we flew with this Buran back here to Gostomel, and then we flew to Paris, Le Bourget, and we showed this tandem, Muriria Buran. And before the Soviet Union collapsed, this system began to fail. The state financing was constantly decreasing, and we had to think how to go on. We had to find ways to earn money in order to build new planes and to continue our aviation work. And this is when this idea was conceived, for us to start to provide air transportation services. The AN-225 didn't just dazzle Paris, but was showcased in many countries during the tensions of the Soviet era. Before that, we exhibited our planes at various air shows in the world. In Paris, Le Bourget held every two years. Farnborough, we were in Singapore, we flew to the US. All that during the Soviet Union times, to show our planes. The decline of the Soviet Union was marked by the worst nuclear disaster the world had ever seen. The explosion of the second reactor in Chernobyl, close to the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. The radioactive fallout took many victims. And as the scope of the environmental catastrophe became clear, the population of the surrounding area was displaced. This was the AN-225's first humanitarian mission, just before the Soviet Union collapsed. Well, let's say in 1990 to 91, I had to transport cargoes. At that time, 
Ukrainian diaspora in America collected some medical equipment for the children who suffered the results of the Chernobyl disaster, which was needed. It was important for them to make it visible, and they asked even the president, if I'm not mistaken, to send them not some Ruslan, but Mirya specifically. So I brought several such shipments from Newark and from Philadelphia. The collapse of the Soviet Union was an unexpected event, and many of the planes that were in the design pipeline would never be realized. The Antonov Design Bureau, however, would manage to keep this giant of the skies alive. The Soviet Union had plans to build several such planes. And there is a second plane, yet it is difficult to say to which extent it is ready, maybe about 40%. Well, it was as it was. There were no funds available to complete construction of the second plane, and it remained unfinished. And the plan was to create several such Mrigyas. Then the Soviet Union collapsed, funding ceased, and we were not even able to complete the final flying test in order to receive the certificate. The Antonov Airlines factory near Kiev continued, but the AN-225 was sadly parked for storage. It would be mothballed for seven years before the Antonov Airlift Company managed to get it repaired and certified for commercial use. And only seven years later, funds were found, internal financial resources that enabled us to modernize Maria for the commercial needs and complete these approximately 20 trial flights in order to obtain the certificate. And then it could transport cargoes flying all over the world. That is why the experience of Antonov, both with regard to the use and maintenance, is great because it is about not only aerodynamics, but also the capacity, resource, reliability of the supporting system and the Maria has all of it. In the year 2000, the plane went through a series of upgrades and repairs and then again made its first public debut in May 2001 at the ceremony of the opening of the new Borispol Kiev airport. In June, Europe got its first look at the sleeping giant that had been modernized to take to the skies once again. It was displayed at the Le Bourget Air Show in France. September the 11th, 2001, would make aviation history in more than one way. In order to demonstrate its potential to the world, on the 11th of September 2001, we performed a record cargo lifting of 253 tons for 10,500 meters of height. Yet, since this event took place on the 11th of September 2001, another event that happened at that time overshadowed this record. The terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center in New York would forever overshadow the 124 world records broken by the AN-225 that day. It flew with four Ukrainian tanks, a total weight of 253 tons. With that heavy cargo, it reached a top speed of 763 kilometers per hour, but very few gave it much attention. The September the 11th attacks led to two massive wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, in which Antonov Airlines and AN-225 would fly missions for the US Army engineers and special forces into some of the most dangerous territory in the world. In one particularly dangerous mission, the AN-225 flew gas turbines into the heart of the fighting in Iraq to the Baiji power plant. Our planes are also often used for transportation of military equipment. All these operations are carried out in accordance with intergovernmental agreements, 
when diplomatic permits are obtained as required. So we transport military equipment from one continent to another as well. Our planes were very often used during operations in Afghanistan, Iraq, and before that, in the Persian Gulf, during the Desert Storm, if you remember the 1991-92 war, the Desert Storm operation. Our planes were used to carry bulldozers and other equipment to put out burning oil wells in that war. Back in Kiev, Sergei Slusharenko manages the Antonov heavy lift operations and cargo carrier requests coming in from all over the world. I am an operational duty attendant. We support charter flights for our Ruslans, our experimental planes. All planes that fly in NTK Antonov receive support in accordance with the orders, handlings. Kerosene is supplied in all airports from which we fly. This is our responsibility. In spring 2015, Antonov Airlines was contracted to transport a boiler from Berlin to Edmonton, Canada, for use in a new water waste plant. The mission required careful planning. The unit had to be moved all in one piece. No other means of transport was efficient enough for the job. Because these are unique planes, and cargoes are sometimes very difficult, up to the unique cargoes weighing 186 tons that are transported with Maria, for them special time is required to prepare loading equipment, for instance, some heavy generators or welded frames and so on. This is developed by our load planning, which is a special office that looks calculates, sometimes examines these items and says what they need. The cargo weighed 151 tons, too heavy for any other transport plane, and without the Mriya could only have been transported by sea, a lengthy and risky transatlantic voyage. We receive commitment advice from the businesses, the transportation contract and we prepare the schedule, select the most suitable option that ensures the safest and cheapest transformation for the customer. Then we reconcile the price and begin to plan the tasks. We submit requests to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for military transportation, and requests are also submitted for civil lines. We form the briefing and support the flight performance. The AN-225 is often in demand because of its advantages when it comes to speed and performance. In proportion, it is far more cost-effective than any means of transport, although it is a massive fuel guzzler that leaves a huge carbon footprint. The time of flight performance does not depend on the type of plane. Maria is a unique plane, and it began to be used more often recently because the world market is somewhat inert, and it needs time to learn that some cargoes were transported in this or in that region. This is why recently, when the French began to transport cargoes from Africa from various difficult airports, they saw that Maria was highly efficient, because, for instance, Ruslan can transport only 60 tons to the nearest point, whereas Maria can transport twice as much. 110. This plane, as well as Mriya, was designed for transportation of very large cargoes, and they are big planes. Big planes create big aerodynamic resistance, and very powerful engines are necessary to overcome it. Powerful engines require a lot of fuel. That is why the capacity of the fuel tanks in the AN-124 is 273 tons. 273 tons 
make it possible to fly for many hours, more than 24. And in Mriya, the fuel tanks can hold more than twice the AN-124. After nearly being retired, the second career of the indefatigable AN-225 had only just begun. The AN-225 flight from Leipzig in Germany, carrying a massive 151-ton boiler to Edmonton in Canada via Goose Bay, is underway. The crew can relax in the lounge built in the aircraft tail, while the pilots take turns at the controls, occasionally able to sleep. The flight is long, but broken up with refueling stops at Reykjavik and Goose Bay, where the glorious dawn allows the Antonov dream to live up to its name. The mega airlifter takes off on the last leg of the flight, with wings bending under the weight of the 300 tons of fuel that are needed to get it to its destination. As the plane flies empty only when it has to, for instance, after it was unloaded and has to fly to pick up a new load, the fuel tanks are almost never full. The plane is loaded and it can take only as much fuel as is necessary to fly to the next aerodrome. Despite its enormous size, the Mriya is more cost-effective than most giants of the air. Mriya needs 20 tons of fuel during the first hour of its flight, and then 18, 17, and less. The weight of the plane decreases as the fuel is burned, and the fuel consumption decreases. So big planes need a lot of fuel. The Antonov Airlift Company has been called upon to transport humanitarian cargoes too, such as to the 2010 Haiti earthquake site and to Japan the following year. The Mriya is perfect for the job, as it is a single plane with one cargo and can get the job done in just a few days. In 2009, the US Federal Emergency Management Agency contracted the AN-225 to fly 10 massive generators into American Samoa after a tsunami damaged a power plant. On board the Antonov are 10 500 kilowatt generators. We're about to begin the offload process. They'll be brought over to our generator staging area about two miles away. In the next several days, they will be deployed from the generator staging area out onto the island. The reason why they're here is because there's not enough generation capability on island with the loss of one of the power plants. These generators, plus the generators that we already have on island, are going to help stabilize the electrical grid throughout the island. The reason why this plane was used to uh, transport the cargo is we have all 10 generators on one aircraft. This is the only aircraft capable of moving this load at once. Today, Antonov Airlines flies a mix of humanitarian, military and commercial missions. Last time we transported from England, East Midland if I'm not mistaken, pressure equipment for production of Jaguar car bodies. They relocated their production facilities to Detroit, USA. We flew to Toronto where we unloaded and then it was near and they transported their equipment further on themselves. There were no special technical things. The cargo was heavy, almost 180 tons. 170 and something was the weight of this pressure equipment. For Maria, such cargoes are normal and customary. The Antonov company, based in Kiev, Ukraine, constructs and designs aircraft for a niche market, transporting the heaviest objects in the world that need to be moved from one place to another. As well as having the largest operating plane in the world, it has a fleet of heavy lift aircraft, many of which have the capability of landing on unpaved and uneven airstrips in the most far-flung destinations. The AN-178 is one of these planes, and a new prototype has just been built.
And AN-178 is the plane that can carry approximately 15 to 18 tons of cargo, which is very important. It can carry various types of cargo, and it has a sufficiently big cabin. It can also transport marine containers. Rain pelts the tarmac as the new AN-178 prepares for its maiden flight from Kiev on a stormy day in May 2015. It is slowly towed into place by Antonov technicians, eager to see their new design take flight. As the pilots prepare for takeoff, spectators huddle along the runway braving the bad weather to watch the new prototype lift off. This plane has a rather high speed. It can be used in unpaved airfields, and today this niche is vacant. Which niche? It is for the planes with the carrying capacity between 10 and 11 tons and 20 tons, exactly 15 to 18. After landing, the successful first flight is celebrated by decorated military officers, government dignitaries and representatives from the commercial aviation sector. It is a rare showing of public fanfare in this country ripped apart by war, a moment for Ukraine to remind the world of one of its standout industries aircraft engineering. The recently unveiled prototype AN-178 may be part of the next generation of Antonov planes, but that doesn't mean that the life of the AN-225 is over. To fully understand why Antonov is such a player in heavy lift aircraft, it is important to look at the market. While there are similar planes with massive heavy lift capabilities built by Boeing, like the C-17 Globemaster III and Lockheed's C-130, these planes are for military, not commercial use, making Antonov one of the only private sector choices for the transportation of massive cargo. There is no other plane that looks quite like it. With its nose able to open up for a loading ramp and its kneeling undercarriage, the AN-225 Mriya is capable of lifting off the ground with a load of 640 metric tons and fitting four small suburban houses in its cargo bay. This monster of the skies has carried the biggest man-made objects in the world and retains its title as the largest airplane in use even after nearly three decades. Thank God, the plane is 25 years old and we have only removable problems. I mean, it hasn't required any global improvement so far and there was no need for them in individual systems. Everything that is worn or broken in the process of use is replaced. In other words, this is a normal operation process. Of course, planes are getting old and they need more attention, that's all. Until the aviation industry can develop an aircraft with the same heavy lift capacities, the Maria will remain one of a kind. Maria remains the largest plane or transport plane, the largest plane in general in the world. I think no one is building a larger plane so far. With regular checkups and mechanical repairs, the life expectancy of the AN-225 could be extended to 50 years in full operation, giving this mighty record-breaking aviation giant another quarter of a century in the skies. <laughs>